I'm Kerry Stinson, and my journey through life has been quite an adventure. For over 20 years, I played Barney the Dinosaur on tour and seven seasons of the hugely popular TV show, Barney and Friends. Now my journey is to bring together friends and guests from all over the entertainment world for inspiring and at times amusing behind the scenes conversation. I'm Kerry Stinson, and this is Purple Roads. Welcome to Purple Roads. My name is Kerry Stinson, and oh my gosh, just wait. We are going to have so, 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 so much fun this week. This is a good friend of mine, someone I just love, someone who has so much energy. And you know, you Barney fans, I know you love getting some inside information. We haven't gone this route before, so I'm really excited. Um, and I love the fact that I'm going to learn something. I always learn something. I'm going to learn something new this week. So we've got, I want to call you Lyle Joe, but we got <laughs> Lyle, <laughs> Lyle Hutchin, who was costumes, art department. You know, I can go on and on. Lyle, how are you? I'm good. I'm doing really good. <laughs> I know. I can't stop smiling seeing you. It's just been too long. I know. It's been a, it's been a hot minute. <laughs> It is, it is. So, I, you know, so you're, why don't we start where you are? Because we're seeing you, you um, have been doing costume work for the Dallas Children's Theater. Yeah, I'm at the Dallas Children's Theater. I've been here, this is be my ninth season. Wow. I'm the resident costume designer and costume shop manager and wardrobe supervisor and craft maker and, and like everything. But yes. it's, it, it is a, it's an awesome place to work and I love it here. And they, you know, they seem to like me because they won't let me go. So <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to let you go. Lyle. <laughs> you were on with with us. So you started with Barney's Big Surprise. Is that correct? Yeah. And then Magical Castle. And you did um, Barney and Friends for several years. Colorful World. Wrong. I did that one. And then right. Toy Factory was the last tour that I did. And uh, didn't didn't we have to steal you from touring to <laughs> to bring you to Barney and, and I, Friends? And I had to, I had to break it to the Wiggles, and they they weren't very happy either. But I said, you know, <laughs> I'll always leave you for something big and purple. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, you got your start in North Texas, right? In uh, in Denton at UNT. Yep. And then uh, kind of went to a couple different places before you found the pur went to the the purple one. <laughs> so why don't why don't why don't we go there with you know how did you get into all this? Was there just a love um, for this industry from from the early days? It, you know, I um, when I left UNT, I just applied for places around Dallas. So I applied to Casa Manana and at the Dallas Children's Theater and uh, at the Dallas Theater Center, and the Theater Center hired me. And so I met all the costume designers and costumers in town just from working there, right? So um, they were doing the first tour, the first Barney tour, and a friend, friends of mine were all working on Lisa Albertson, you know, Tracy Hutton. They're all, we're all, you know, thick as thieves, friends, costumers. And they're like, we need some help. Would you come and, you know, work on this tour that we're doing? And I didn't really know Barney that well. I had heard of Barney, but I didn't know the magnitude of Barney and then I think it was Georgia Wagonhurst that said, hey, they need someone to go out on the tour to be a wrangler for the dinosaurs. Are you interested? I said, absolutely. I had um, put all my stuff in stories already. And I had kind of, I was in between jobs. So I was living at home. And so it was a perfect setup for me just to go, you know. And so I, I never turned back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then you got to Fort Worth and thought, oh, my gosh, what did I get myself into? <laughs> oh, my God. It was like, really, I mean number one, the production value, I was blown away by, you know, to have that kind of production value on something that was a kid's show, you know, right. and of course, then we were, we were in that building right after they had the rodeo. So it was, it was so pleasant, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll never forget the first, you know, the first show. And that's when I kind of realized like, this is, this is not a little thing. This is big because right. you know they we did that reveal where the Barney plush was on the stool and they pulled out the Barney would jump out and it was like screaming so loud and cameras flashing and like like lightning was going off and I was like oh my gosh this is this is major <laughs> so. yeah I, I it, it's so funny I, you know I was one of uh, myself and Dave Voss were really only a couple of them that had been with Barney 
right. when the tour came in. And so I had been seeing it with, um, you know, doing sing-alongs, the craziness of it. And, but, but even so, I had been doing sing-alongs. So I had seen the crowds and I knew the light flashing and all that. But I didn't know the production. Obviously, I didn't know about Jake Barry. I didn't know all that stuff that was going to come in, too. And uh, I think, you know, all of us thought, oh, my gosh, a children's tour. And, you know, you think bus and truck and, and no, no, no. <laughs> this was so much bigger. Yeah. Um, what were you thinking? Because, you know, we, we had three dinosaurs out there, but two actors per. And, I mean, it's a Broadway show. You're doing seven shows a week. So there's a lot to keep keep up with. We're moving on. We're, we're, those costumes took a lot of abuse, as you know. Yeah. I mean, what was it when you start getting in thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to be crazy. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, and it's, and the dealing with some of the talent too, like how they were physically reacting to all this, you know, not used to being in a costume for two or three hours straight, you know, I mean, we could take them a little bit out, but we couldn't get them completely undressed. And so, right. you know, seeing an actor like on a little scooter, just fall over. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, you know, this, this is this is what's going to be happening now i mean it was just crazy you know and um but it was unlike anything i'd ever done you know too so it was it was an exciting experience like i said it was it was kind of an answered prayer that i would i had no work whatsoever so when i got hired on barney i was just like thank goodness you know i have some work so well and there was several josh was like that too you know josh josh was doing acting school and just putting it together <laughs> when that happened too. So I know there were several people um, that jumped in and then all of a sudden it's, it's this larger than life thing. It's so funny you say that about um, the actors and, and that because, and I, I probably said this on this show before, but I haven't said it enough. The importance of the Wranglers. I mean, you all kept us alive. You kept us laughing. You kept us through so many difficult things. We were splitting seams and doing, <laughs> Lau, can you fix this? Lau, can you fix this? Shauna, can you fix this? You know, Lori Z and all of that. Yeah. You know, it, it it's important for people that I know a lot that watch the show want to get in the industry and things of that nature. But the importance of everyone's job and the importance of, of you guys' jobs and what you are doing, I can't say enough of that. Did you feel that? Like, oh my gosh, you know, one of these people are going to pass out or something. I, I I gotta keep them going. Exactly, and and also the 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 change of being in a controlled studio, right? Then getting live on stage where you have no control over if something happens, you know, Barney's eyes would close or his toe would pop out, and you what what do you do? I mean, you just like get him off stage as quick as you can and get somebody else out there. But you know, it was that kind of learning adjustment for I think a lot of people, like the difference between it being live and it being shot in a controlled place. So. That was a learning curve, I'm sure, for everybody. Absolutely. Had you done any live performance before that? Anything involved with live performance? Well, not really, like, with um, characters like that, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I did wardrobe backstage at the, at the uh, theater center where I did nice. quick changes and stuff like that with actors, but never anything that had that kind of intense costuming, you know, so... But did that help you? I mean, was that good training doing the theater center and at least learning some of that part of it? Yeah, it was that was to learn how to kind of deal with actors and you know what they need because it's it's the same you know an actor that's in a costume that needs you know water and stuff is the same as somebody that's in a big old suit that needs the same kind of care you just apply it to the person so right but we were a little bit different and I'll speak for myself here I was hired because I I was in very good physical shape I was a runner I was doing those kind of things. But some of the acting aspects, you know, I had to learn over the years and some of the, you know, all of that, I had never done some of that before. So you're dealing with, with some people and then even I've been doing it for five years, but there's still some greenness with some of the people going on like that. Right. You know, and there's no stopping people. I don't yeah. know if they understand this. When Barney jumps out, it's going for an hour and a half, no yeah. matter what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so and all and all, you know that um, uh, physicality that people had to build up. You know, some of the actors were were greener than you. You know, and they had to like build up that endurance. And you know, and, and I, I say all the time that you guys you, you worked your butts off. You know, but also trying to find that 
how big you need to be in that costume. You know, you need to be a lot bigger with your gestures and your physicality than you think, you know, because right. you're, you're stuffed inside of something too, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. Right. It was, it's so funny too, because I think the importance we laugh about, you're a very funny person. <laughs> <laughs> but those things are important. You know, those things are really important. I can just remember days being tired of this and that. You'd have me laughing or Josh or any of us. And it, it's all of those little things. Right. I mean, obviously you can take care of costumes, but all those other things. Sure. Is, is it just something that you, you know, you go, oh. I mean, it, it, doing the same show every day is, is difficult. It how, is do you, the how do you do with the, the mundane of it? in some well, aspects you know i always say it's, it's inconsistent consistency because even though we're doing the same show everything else is different we're in a different building we're in a different you know on a different stage we're dealing with different stage hands except for the people that were with us so we we're always trying to say we're going to make it as consistent as possible under these extreme circumstances sometimes the stage wasn't as good as other places sometimes we were setting up shop in a men's bathroom you know so we just had to kind of you know you had to learn to adapt to all that stuff and not let it bother you. You just had to go, okay, this is what it is. We're only here for a week or three days. I can do anything for that long. So, but you know, I learned that kind of patience with traveling like that. You know, and the Wiggles were the same way. They were even more intense. But <laughs> you, just, you just learn patience. You learn that you can't control that kind of stuff. So just let it go, you know, concentrate on what is more important, you know, so. Well, you had to have an advantage though. By the time you get to the Wiggles, you know, you'd been out with the purple one for a long time. Yeah. So you had to be like, oh, I, I, I got, I can handle these boys. Yeah, but you know, I think you know, I was, I never ask questions. It's one of my flaws. I never like really investigate. So I said, you want to do the Wiggles? I said, oh, sure, that'd be fun. I'm thinking four Wiggles, and then you know, Dorothy and Wags and Henry the Octopus. Oh no, it's like sixteen other dancers. <laughs> so we're at the first, we're at the first venue, and all these giant trunks arrive. And I said, what is that? They're like, that's the wardrobe. I said, oh my god, you're kidding me. I mean, it was like so much wardrobe. They each had each you know dancer had a, 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 a costume for every number even if they weren't in or not and I'm like what did I get myself <laughs> so, like, once again you didn't ask the right questions you just blindly accepted the job <laughs> because you wanted to do it but they're you know they're they're great great people you know and they require hardly any care whatsoever they're very self-sufficient or they were when I was touring with them so anything you did they totally appreciated but yeah they, they're well, it's something I want to talk about because the difference in having a costume, and we'll talk about this later because I definitely want to talk about Barney and Friends, but a costume that's going to be seen on TV compared to one that's going to be worn every night. I mean, do you, do you prep those costumes a little bit different? Or you just have to be ready for whatever? Because they're going to tear. Things are yeah. going to happen. Yeah, so, you know, you have to make sure, like, I learned, because we do, what we had in the past, do a small tour here at the okay. Children's Theater, and I learned, okay, everything has got to be able to throw in the washer, you can't really send stuff out that's too technically complicated, because you don't have a person taking care of it, uh, so on the Wiggles, it was kind of the same way, but they were bringing stuff from the studio, so there was lots of repairs, and, and one uh, time, they had these white sailor pants, and okay. they were filthy, so I thought, I'm gonna wash them. They shrank. <laughs> they were putting them on there. Oh my God, what happened? Oh, I, I didn't draw, I said, but I washed them. And I guess the person who made them didn't wash the fabric beforehand. So it shrank. So I had to make, I think, like six pair of pants within a day. You know, so I was like, they're like, that's very impressive. I said, well, you, you know, you need them. You can't be wearing them. They, they were skin tight and <laughs> just not appropriate, you know? <laughs> Not for a kid's show. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, live and learn. Like <laughs> oh my gosh, I love that. Do you, to when you're packing for something like this, let's talk about the wardrobe part. Are you like, I'm going to bring every needle, I'm going to bring every thread, I'm going to bring every... 
every little, you know, Lisa Albertson is a Girl Scout. I mean, she doesn't leave any stone unturned. So she is very prepared. I mean, we we're probably more over prepared to go out because we didn't have any the want for anything when you got to a place like you didn't know where, you know, in Des Moines, if they had a Joann's that you could go and get thread or whatever, or where you were going to be. So, I mean, we, we kind of over prepared. So you, you had everything that you needed to fix, clean, repair, you know, doubles on costumes, doubles on shoes. I mean, you know, the, all the dancers had a huge wardrobe of tights and all that kind of stuff. So we didn't, you never knew what's the laundry situation. Are we going to be able to hook up the washer and dryer? Or do they have a washer and, you know, so that all has to, was taken into consideration whenever you start to pack that stuff. Did you ever have to make, I'm guessing you did, trips to find the, the Joann's or find the whatever in a, in oh, a city? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. Because sometimes it was like, why you couldn't really explain to the runner. I said, it's just easier for me to go and he can drop me off and I can get what I want. And he can come back and pick me up instead of him going in there or her, whoever it was, trying to find the exact kind of thing that I needed to, to fix a costume. So. But was that challenging in like a small town? Yeah. And it was, you know, it was always challenging too with the dressers that you would get in each city. Right. I mean, the smaller the town, the kind of you know, not as good as the ones that were in the union, like in Chicago and New York City, where they they did it all the time. You know, we would always joke saying, oh, who are we going to get today? Are we going to get Granny? And, you know, <laughs> uh, are we going to get the load, what we call the load in, load out sweetheart, the, the girlfriend of some of the stage crew and had no experience. And I was like, who are we going to, we were like, what's luck of the draw? So we'd always start make bets on who the, who the dressers were going to be. <laughs> I can just see it now. I can just see it now when they walked in the door. Did you, I mean, did you ever have one that I couldn't sew or things of that nature? You know, I had some that couldn't even let, when we were doing a musical castle, we had that giant sign that David Boss tap dance and well, it took a couple, it wasn't heavy, but it took a right. couple of people to lift it up and put it on. It was like, I had people who couldn't even lift that, you know? <laughs> so this one lady, she was so old. I thought, oh my gosh, she's going to fall and break a hip or something. She was, she was determined, you know, she was not going to let me not let her do it. But I was just like, and other times they would be like non they would just be gone. Like, where are they? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like go and find them and they'd be on the decks, you know, on the, on the dock smoking. And I'm like, ladies, you have a cue, you know. <laughs> there was one time where, I, you know, we went back because usually we go back to the same city and right. I had the same dresser. And she had messed up a cue and I had, to, you know, you have one cue. Uh, that's all I ask for you to do. So yeah. <laughs> the next time I'm there, I'm explaining to the dressers what it is they need to do. And, all. and she turns to the other one. She said, and just to let you know, if you don't do it right, he'll tell you. And I thought, <laughs> she's held a grudge for two years against me. <laughs> I said, lady, let it go, you know. <laughs> you know, but it's so funny you say that because it, but it really is important. You know, what we were doing, and I think probably part of the problem is they sign up thinking they're just doing a regular children's show. Yeah. And this is not a regular show. No. No. <laughs> and no, for no. us, I, and I'll just speak for the, the dinos, we rely on that. Like I know, you know, on whatever break, I need someone to be there immediately. Cause I, you know, it's like a, it's like a, a NASCAR, you know, the tire oil change, right? Yeah, you need exactly. someone to quickly wipe you and <laughs> drink and fluid and throw your butt back out, <laughs> out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the stories are just rolling. They're just, they're just rolling. What did you think? Because, you know, we sweat like nobody's dang business. I mean, I can imagine trying to take care of that aspects of it and, and the amount of damage that sweat can do to those costumes. I remember when they tried, someone tried to get me to wear a, an ice vest. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. And and within 10 minutes it was it was just it was liquid and I yeah. came out and they said, Are you cool? And I hit them. <laughs> yeah, and it just becomes dead weight, you know, it's just like extra weight. It's not really helping any. You know? <laughs> right, right, right. But we tried all these different ways to see yeah. how, how we could help them. What did you think about? I mean, what did you start realizing pretty early on? Oh my gosh, we're gonna we're gonna need more thread. We're gonna, yeah, because, you know, the same thing would happen over and over again, like the crotches would split and the same, you know, it was the same kind of repair you were doing all right. the time. Right. So I had after 
that first year I went and worked in the dino shop at um, Iron Corey's and kind of mm-hmm. explained to them, you know, this is what needs to happen. This comes apart a lot. This breaks, you know, was, and on the little dinos, I said, would it be something that we could actually um, take apart and skin it, you know, so we can clean the different components of it. So that, that came out of being on that first tour. So it would be so easy, so much better for everybody that if we could wash these separately, take them apart and put it back together. So that came out of that. And then you, you ended up doing costume work as well on, on all of that. Yeah. Cause you wrangled for a little bit and then you, you moved into that. Now you've got kids, you know, and I, I think about obviously the crazy dancers we had out there with ducks and, and mama goose and, and the king and, and all of that stuff. Well, same thing. Those costumes are going through a lot. Yeah. What did you deal with with, with those? Well, you, you know, um, they were built the right way, you know, because the first time they went around, then the second time we did, like, I guess Music Castle, I was in on the build. So we made sure that they could be washed and that we had doubles and all that kind of stuff. But nothing was dyed. Like on the first tour, they sent all these duct types. They had been dyed. Well, you couldn't wash them with anything. And you had to hang them to dry. So we can't have any of that. We can't string up a clothesline, you know. We have, there's it's just too much going on. So we kind of, we'd fine tune that too. So after a while, it just became, you know, it needs to be able to be repaired quickly and it needs to be able to be washed in the washer as much as possible. Can, can you think of some funny stories of things that happen? <laughs> I know you can. You know, this, this is a little more than a PG show. So, you know, you, <laughs> you can tell out, but some funny stories you can think of. Well, it's like, you know, these costumes. <laughs> um, during a colorful world, we had that polar bear costume. Yeah. This is notorious. Like a, a phone call I never wanted to make. So David Boss somehow backed up onto the fog machine and it left a grease stain on the back of it. So you can wash it. It's like, oh, so I took it, threw it in the washer and it, we were loading out. And so I thought, well, let me just put it in the dryer for like, just to get some of the dampness out of it, not really dry it. And when I took it out, <laughs> it had curled and turned yellow, the whole thing. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And I couldn't figure it out. So I know you can dry fake fur, but I think maybe, you know, just me trying to, it was a gas dryer, maybe the gas or something. Had to, and I had to call Sloan and tell her. And I was like, guess what I did? <laughs> I, I uh, kind of ruined it. I mean, it, it wasn't that bad. I mean, you could kind of tell that it was a different color and that right. it was, you know, from the head and everything else. But she said, well, you never make mistakes, but when you do, you, you do a big one. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll tell you, when Sloan was on, on Purple Tail, on the other podcast, it, it, you just don't know how big of a personality that lady had. And I never like to make those phone calls either. I did a few of those myself, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah. How, did, how, did you, how did you fix it? We just had to rebuild it in the summer. When we went down, we had to remake it. We just kind of lived with it. You know, luckily, we weren't filming a video and... You know, it wasn't like when Sloan saw it, she said, it's not that bad. I mean, you know, really in the, in the scheme of things, but you know, it was mortifying for me. It's like, oh my gosh. I mean, I tried everything. I like took it to my hotel room <laughs> and like put tons of, of um, conditioner, hair conditioner on it and tried to like work it out. I didn't work. So, well, I can't really bleach it because it's, it's synthetic. Cause that's not going to even help in any, I can't, you know, but I tried everything, but I was just like, why did I not listen to myself and just hang it up, dry, hang it up wet and just take it, you know, but I just thought, oh, I can, and I, I remember it was probably a, you know, a two day uh, break that we had and I didn't want it to be in the road case all wet. And so who knows, but. <laughs> well, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because the challenges out there, I mean, when you're going straight to straight and some people, you know, don't understand, but you do a week sometimes and sometimes it's a split week. And usually those are the small cities. And so there's a little break here and you're, you know, you're overnight on a bus and you're this and that, all those challenges. I I can just imagine. Yeah. (laughs) What, um, do you have challenges with the kids? Here? Right now, like well, no, 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 our kids on the road. Oh, because the road. Oh, well, yeah, of course I did. They were, you know, they were great kids. They're, they're still great kids. I follow them relentlessly on Facebook to see how they're doing. They're all just 
they're doing, you know, amazing things with their lives. So that makes me happy. Um, but, you know, there was times when I'm trying to get them to hang up their clothes and trying to get myself, you know what, I'm going to take those, I'm going to take them away and you're not going to have them. And <laughs> so I went to one of the shows, I took, she would never hang up her clothes, so I took them away. And she comes out and she's wearing this kind of weird, I said, what are you wearing? She goes, well, I'm wearing my costume. She had like pieced together some <laughs> costume from the road case. Like, well, and then they fit her. It was like, the pants are too short. Mm-hmm. I said, that's not even your costume. She goes, yeah, it is. I mean, this is what I could find. I'm like, she didn't even get it. I said, I took your costume because you didn't hang it up, you know? <laughs> and and you, you were supposed to come and ask me so I could say, you know what? You didn't hang up your costume. This is the consequence. But, you know, that didn't work on her, so. <laughs> well, it's so funny because a lot of us, you know, it was just such a new experience. I, I talk about it on here all the time that, you know, we weren't from New York. We weren't from LA. We were in Texas. There was, you know, a lot of things that they were looking for that they found in people, but there were things that we didn't know in, in those areas. So those kids weren't, most of them weren't trained actors. A lot of times they just had a, you know, a good singing voice or this or that. And so they fit or good look, whatever. But yeah, <laughs> of course you deal with some stuff like that. Yeah. Oh my God. It's killing me. Um, what did you see as you as you you go from these different shows? I mean, it obviously got to get easier. It, you know, of course, it got easier because you knew kind of what the trouble would be. <laughs> you right. kind of could troubleshoot. You know, like I said, you never really know for sure. But um, you know, the more organized you got, too, it's like you know, you could fine tune that a little bit where you kind of knew. Like, say, if I didn't have a good dresser, I didn't have good help, I knew what I would have to do, you know, right. that I would have to come and start do that part of it, which is, that was fine. I would rather have the actor be comfortable and know that that's going to get done than have them rely on somebody that's never going to show up or do what not they're supposed to do, you know? I mean, there were times where I said, you know what, I just went to the production manager and said, I, this person's useless. I and mean, why are we paying them? Tell them to go home, <laughs> you know, because, I mean, I don't want them sitting around and catering all day eating, you know, cake and such. <laughs> That's not what they're there here to do. And so if they can't do the simple things I asked them, there never was anything complicated. Maybe the right. lifting, you know, we had that big elephant costume that had sure. to be hoisted down. That was kind of, you know, but usually a stagehand did that, not a, right. not a dresser. So, but, you know, it's, it's learning that kind of thing. And it's, it was invaluable to me that, you know, I came off the road with all that knowledge, you know, just by doing it, which right. I would have never gotten in any theater here, you know. Right. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, it's the it's the greatest education, but also I think that that bond that everyone ends up getting. You know, we're we're a bunch of strangers in Fort Worth, staying at the what the Green Oaks Hotel, <laughs> the Cabanas, <laughs> and then the venue with the flies, and uh, and then all of a sudden, I think we did we go to Midland first, and then St. Louis. I know St. Louis was like the big, yeah city out there and I think that was just a oh my gosh because all of a sudden we kind of pulled the the cord from Dallas and all of the 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 you know it's all of a sudden it's just a road crew now right we're all kind of on our own at this point and you build those relationships as you as you're going every night the importance of that and and I, I I'm curious to get your opinion and get your thoughts on because so out there, I mean, we went every night, my gosh, for nine months on that first leg of Big Surprise. And that show was so huge and we were sold out every night and all of that. But we all have our different vibe. Right. Right. Josh and I are very different. Best of buds, but but we're different. We prepare different. We do all those things. Same with Lee and uh, and and O'Connell and and Hagen. I know I mentioned the names. You're like, oh my God, I haven't thought of those in a while. <laughs> What was that like for you when you're like, oh, this one does it a little bit different. This one likes to show up at this time, or this one listens to music, or this one preps this way. But you still have to do your job, right? It's important. Hey, I got to fix this or this or that. What was that like for you to to get that vibe of it? It's you know, it's it's getting. Uh, they have to get used to you too. You know, they had to get used to me. And I, I this is another funny story. But we were in a, I think it was in. It was a Fort Worth. It had, we were in some bar, and Mike Hagen was sitting right in front of me at the bar, not knowing I was behind him. And they were asking him, he said, Yeah, but I don't know if I like him. He's a little fruity. 
yeah. And I'm like, I'm standing right here. It's like, <laughs> that's Miss Fruity to you. <laughs> but I was just like, oh, so I guess he just, that's going to bother him, you know? And so I just, I always try to make a joke about that to make people think, you know, it doesn't bother me at all. So if you're bothered by that, that's, that's, you need to kind of deal with that. But I, I'm not going to go anywhere because you think I'm fruity, you know? <laughs> Uh, I think it's so funny, and you know, funny you, you bring that up, you know, because obviously all the, we, I think the world's gone crazy, uh, Lyle, but everyone was out on that, you know, you're talking about diversity, we, everyone was out on, on the, on the road, yeah. and we had such a, um, I mean, he was a construction worker, you know, yeah. I mean, he, right, so we had all these different people that had never worked in these different areas, obviously I want to talk about the rock and roll crew here in a minute, but I think we all learned this this respect that yeah, <laughs> maybe some people didn't get people at first, but boy, as we got out there, it yeah. changed. And your relationship with Mike would have changed. Yeah, it did. It did change. Once you put him in line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like when I told his wife when they were getting married, and I said, "This is the only thing you have to say to him when he starts um, whining and complaining is just like, oh, I hate that for you." <laughs> Because I used to say that to him all the time when he'd be like, hey, I was like, oh, I hate that for you. <laughs> Which I think is so condescending. And <laughs> Yeah, but, I, but I, I, I love that too, because I think we did that as perform. I, well, I had, I had a good idea of what I was getting involved in because I'd been doing that. But I think a lot of them went, oh my God, we're going to get paid this and we're going to do this and we're going to do this. And then all of a sudden, you're out on stage doing those shows every night and the physicality of it and all of that. Sure. And yeah. the, the, the importance of everyone. Um, I love that because obviously the crew was to say, you know, these rock and rollers, man, there was no, there was no sympathy. <laughs> Harold and Mo and oh Creech. And <laughs> what was like for that for you? So all of a sudden now you're working with a rock and roll, I mean, true rock and roll crew. Yeah, like not the stagehands that I had at the theater center that were more gentle, you know, they weren't, they weren't like that. And they had just, I guess, come off um, Rolling Stones. I'm sure they were, they needed the work and Jake probably said, hey, do this and I'll, I'll take care of you later. Of course, you right. know, whenever they were going to introduce the buses, I was terrified because I was telling a friend of mine, I said, they're going to, we're going to start running these buses. He said, well, you better butch up. They're, they're going to kick you off the bus in Des Moines. And I was like, <laughs> so I was terrified. I went to Lori uh, Berry at the time. I said, I, I, can I just ride the cast bus? I, I kind of get along with them better. And she's like, no, you're on the crew. You're on the crew <laughs> bus. And I said, oh, oh, maybe there's somebody on the cast bus. I might want to take my place. She said, no, you're on the crew. You're on the crew bus. Went, oh, great. Awesome. So I was, you know, we would do our load out and I would, we would be the first out because the wardrobe truck loaded first and we would take our showers or whatever and have our dinner. The minute one of them got on the bus, I got in my bunk, shut the curtain and started praying. It's like, <laughs> maybe they'll forget I'm here, you know? <laughs> and then one out of here, where's my home? I'm like, oh my gosh. I want to say, he's dead. <laughs> but, and then here comes Harold, Harold pulls back the curtain, pulls me out of the bunk and says, you're coming back here with us. I'm like, Okay, then that was like the beginning of the end of it. <laughs> They're like, you're not going to stay in your bunk this whole time and hide. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> well, I had a heroin experience like that too. One night I had to, I forget where we were, I had to ride, they wanted me to ride on the bus and I was on the cast bus and all of a sudden here comes Harold. You're coming with me and just, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it was one of my favorite nights of, of all yeah, time. but I think it was this. I think it was the same thing for us, right? That you, you know, I mean, they're as professional as you get. My God, they've been dealing with the the Rolling Stones and the ACDC and you know you two and all of that. Um, and they're probably thinking the same thing. What in the world did we yeah. we sign up on? But as professional as as you get. Yeah. And and uh, oh my God, that's just, that's hysterical. How long, besides the, the bus experience, did you start realizing, I mean, did you need something in the beginning? Were you afraid to go to them for something or? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was because we, you know, we had Rob back then, remember Rob? Oh yeah. So he would just, I would just go to Rob and say, we need, you know, whatever and let him take, that was kind of his job. So we kind of just 
laid low and we would do stuff like Lori Z and I would do stuff to try to make them laugh and they wouldn't crack. They would not laugh at our joke, whatever we do. Like we one time took Humpty Dumpty and traced him out like he died with a chalk tracing and took him and, you know, and they were like, they were unplussed by it. They were, they were just like, mm, we don't, you know, <laughs> that's not funny to us and whatever, you know, we were just like, oh, that, we thought that would get them, but no, we would, do, we, we, we would try, you know. <laughs> I have a picture. I found it yesterday. I'll have to show it at some point when we were at Radio City, because that was early on still when we went to New York. And Harold goes, come here. And I, yeah, he, I don't know if you remember this. He had put Carrie's dressing room. He had a sign, the star's dressing room or something. And when you open the door, it was a toilet. <laughs> That's it. It was just a toilet. It was like, so it's going to be like that. But that was part of that blending, right? Yeah. You know, and, and I, you know, I think it, what is so amazing of all these years, I can call any of them up. I can call you. It, it's like nothing's changed. I feel like I just saw you yesterday, Lyle. Yeah. I feel like if I split my pants, I could send them <laughs> over, you know, and you'd say, or oh, whatever, you know what I mean? Or right. I needed a good laugh. I could call Lyle. And I think, you know, that's the thing that came from, from tour life. It's really hard to explain that we just, you're so tight. I mean, you just become, um, not only because you're out there all the time, but because you trust each other. I mean, you know everything of each other. We didn't have, you know, we barely had cell phones. We surely yeah. didn't have smartphones. You didn't, you know, I would, I like left and, you know, called my parents. And the next thing I know, I probably only talked to them a couple times a month because you were you were gone you were literally gone yeah and um, you know that was crazy what did you do on the road when you needed to escape for a moment because we're together 24 right. 7 but you know what would you do you know we were lucky that we had our own hotel rooms that they they were they were generous enough to because most tours like like a sesame street or whatever they they share and they have to you know so i think that kind of separation would it was good for everybody thank you because you know like you said we eat sleep play work together it's like you're around somebody you know i remember when we first started they say you either get along or you get along you know <laughs> so that, that kind of always stuck in my head so you know it's like you just have to kind of you know take that time when you can usually on my day off i would sometimes just go by myself you know and i would go to a museum or i'd go have a dinner somewhere just you know by myself because i'm not really afraid to to do that Right. But, you know, it was always fun to take someone else with you, too. But, you know, when I really just needed not to, I would just stay in my hotel room, order room service and sleep, you know. Like, <laughs> right. You know. Right. Yeah. Catching up with sleep was, was definitely important. Do you have a favorite city? Um, let's see. You know, I always like, you know, New York City, of course. Let's see. Where else did I like? Um, maybe Mobile, Alabama was a nice city. We went there, I think, the first it was one of the first stops on the first tour, and I found a little great restaurant there. Um, Louisville, Kentucky, I love that place. Um, but you know, as we, when some days I'll be in, I'll say, I'm in Louisville, Kentucky, I would never be here in my entire life. Why would I ever come here, you know, for right. any other reason? And I was like, you're so lucky that this has happened to you, that you get to experience all these different cities that you would have never, never gone to, you know, right. even by choice, probably, you know, so. Right, which is, it's fascinating, right? Yeah. Because, you know, I run into people these days and, you know, you tell them and there's not many cities in the U.S. I haven't been to, states I haven't been to, you know, yeah. like, yeah, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that. And it's an experience you just, you didn't realize that, goodness gracious, all the places we got to go to. Did, uh, did you get to meet any, you know, we talk about some of the celebrities that would come out. What were those experiences like for you? Well, never really... You know, I didn't actually meet anybody. I just was like on stage with them. Yeah. <laughs> no one ever said, hey, Rose O'Donnell, this is Lyle. He's like, you know, she didn't probably <laughs> care. But, you know, right. it's just weird to be that close to somebody. Like Paul Simon, remember, he came to Radio City. And it was just kind of, it's like, that's a real person that's like standing next to me, you know. And of course, I'm not like that kind of person that's like, oh, can I have your autograph? And I think you're so wonderful. Right. It's like, they don't like, you know, they, they may like it or they may put up with it, but they don't want that. And they, they're there with their kids. And so. You know, I just kind of would just observe from afar and not, not get into their space, you know, so. But wasn't it amazing that, because I realized that they are like, kind of exactly what you said. All of a sudden you realize that's really just a parent. Yeah. Just excited to, you know, 
see their, their kids getting them to meet Barney. And it was very, very sweet. You know, um, John Travolta is huge Barney fan because of his son. And they came when we were at Long, in Long Beach, they came to see the show and he was, Kelly Preston was still alive then. And they stayed back and met with the cast out, you know, and talked to them and stuff. And you know, he didn't have to do that, but right. you know, he just appreciated what we did for his son so much that he wanted to, to kind of share. And, you know, that was very, very sweet of him. So, well, and talk about that. What, have you ever been part about something that, I mean, everyone loved what Barney was doing so much and kept that message across. I mean, what, what was that like for you when you started seeing, you know, how Barney and Ink Dinos affected, you know, special needs kids and, and all of these things and to see the, the crowds and all of that stuff. What is that like for you? Cause you know, you're part of something that really means something to people. Yeah. You know, it was, it was um, always funny to see, you know, I would see little kids just like grab onto Barney's belly, like, you know, just cling on. And then some that were really, really scared. But the, the best part was whenever we would go to the hospitals and that's when it was like really meaningful. And you would see, you know, Lori um, Beery would say, you cannot cry. You cannot cry. So if you're going to cry, you got to leave the room. And, you know, there'd be a sick kid that hadn't smiled and Barney would touch their head and they would just light up. And it's like, you can't you can't replace that. You can't get that. You know, when I would always get kind of um, miffed at people that would say, Oh my God, how can you stand Barney? I said, I'm not three, you know, I, I don't get it either, but that's something that magic that he has with little kids that I, I don't understand either, but it, it was that it was Barney magic. Yeah. It, it really, it's really something that's amazing. Yeah. Come off the road. we get you on to Barney and friends. What's it like the experience now, in the studio, so you're still working with the dinos. Uh, now you, you, we've switched one. Well, that was Jeff Ayers at the time. So Jeff Ayers is with Kyle and myself. So you got a couple different uh, dinos going on and the bigger set, but you're with, you know, Lisa and Tracy and all of that. What was this experience like? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the same kind of family experience. You know, they have been doing it for a long, long time. You know, Lisa had been working there from the very beginning. And so it was like coming home like where you're on the road you know, you were on the road and you were still representing what the Barney brand was and wanting to make that the best that you possibly could be because that's what you're there for, you know. But when you got into the studio, it was just, it, was a, it wasn't, I would say more laid back, but it was just a different kind of vibe, you know. So it wasn't as rushed. And if something would happen, it would stop and you could fix it and, you know, whatever. So this was just this kind of a different vibe, but not the different kind of um, family value kind of thing, you know, it was just different people, you know. So is it hard for you to be off the road? You know what, after um, I got off the road, and I think it was the, the second leg of Toy Factor was going out, I said, I don't, I don't really miss it, you know. Um, you know, I was just thinking this morning, if I could recreate the bus ride with all the people, we could just like go on a, get on a bus and go somewhere and have that kind of experience. That would be it. But to go on a tour again, I don't think I could do it. You know, number one, just, just because I'm, I'm getting too old, you know, just the physical, you know. Uh, did Lyle just <laughs> say he's getting too old? I don't believe that. But it, it was a it was a hard decision to make, yeah. you know, because I loved the road and I loved the people on it, but I was thought, you know, I have a job here. It's, it's not going anywhere. Take it. Because I think that's what happens with people who, who tour like all their lifers, they can't, they don't get a chance to actually get off the road and they just get kind of in that wheel and they can't really step out of it because they, they need the money and they need the, right. you know, and so it's just hard for them. So once I thought, you know, this is your time and just, just take it, you know? And so I did. Yeah, it's it's interesting because obviously I've thought about it too. There's a there's a freedom about it. You know, we were we which I I give so much credit to them. As long as you as long as that show went out and you took care of yourself and did all the things, there's a lot of freedom there, right? Do what you want there today. If you want to go to a museum, or you want to go to dinner, do whatever you want. Make sure you're there on time. Do this and this and that. And as long as that keeps going, and of course, you know a new city every night there's this and that so i think you miss a, or at least i did a little bit you know you're back at the studio and you show up at whatever seven o'clock and then you're there till six and we're going to do this and this. so it's much more structured um and then and then you know you're in you're in dallas and you're like 
I miss some of the aspects of, you know, you wake up in a new city and you can get in a car and go to the mountains or a museum or uh, experiences a little bit. That was a little bit hard. Yeah. Did you, um, I mean, the people, the people alone, you miss them. Um, but there, I think there's such an activity too, right? Because you never know if, if something's going to, you know, if you wash someone's sailor pants and they shrink, <laughs> yeah, right? That's yeah. a much bigger deal on the road than it is if it happens in the studio. Right, because at the studio, we would have had another pair, you know, because that's how prepared we were. We'd have, you know, a double on it because you never know if it's going to get stained or, they're, you know, what's going to happen. So you always had a double. So there would have been another pair of pants, you know, and there would have been another pair of pants on the Barney tour too. They would have had two. So if I would have done that, I would have known that at least I would have a couple of days or I could call Lisa and say, hey, guess what? I washed these pants, they shrank and she would have the shop make them or buy them and send them to me, you know? So you always had that kind of safety net on the tour. But was, it, was it fun when you're doing the TV show because they're creating stuff, right? You've got an episode coming up. Um, you know, Barney and the kids are going to go here. We need these costumes. We need this and that. Do you love those? Enjoy those challenges? Yeah, it was fun. You know, it was, it was always, you know, especially the kind of um, different ones where we had like one where we had to make costumes out of recycled material, you know, and so we had, and they had a kind of a parade. It was like a, a Earth Day parade and they wanted to be, you know, like a different things. And so we had to collect all this stuff and each, everybody in the shop made it something different. So it looked like different people made it, you know, mm -hmm. and when it turned out, it was, it was really, really cute. It's stuff like that, you know, that kind of, again, coming together and creating something with, you know, the, the purpose of mind of creating something for the whole. And so that was always, that was always fun. And what is your creative process? Do you uh, sketch something out? Do you start looking at know, materials? It's usually, you know, I, I do tons of research. You know, the internet has saved me as a designer because I can go, oh, I'm thinking about a shoe that has a curly toe and then I can just put that in the Google search and it just pops up, you know? So I do tons, I look at, you know, like say I'm doing a bumblebee costume, I will look at the bee and then I will look at fabric and then I will look at some avant-garde, somebody that did it and kind of take that and kind of roll it together and kind of create, you know, you know, that's always, that's the funnest part for me is actually the research. And when we do, you know, when we're doing kid books and we're ad adapting them to the stage, I always want to make sure that I get it as close to that illustration as possible. Because me as a little kid, I would have said, hey, that doesn't look like the hat and go dog go. That doesn't look anything like it. <laughs> oh, your costume critic at the age of seven. But I was like, that. I was like, that doesn't look like it at all. You know, that that doesn't look like Charlie Brown. But, you know. <laughs> So I always make sure that, especially in that situation, that I stick as close to, and if it's a if it's a written book, that I stick as close to the to the uh, word as when they describe a character as I can, you know. So, do you get that from the kids? Do, do they ever say stuff like that? Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. So we did a show with um with Santa, had a Santa in it. Santa was coming to visit. I mean, coming to give presents, and he had his elves, and so the elves were. Um, with him and they were putting out the presents or whatever and this little girl was trying on her costume she's like oh, this doesn't have any jingle bells on it and I was like well you're coming in late at night and you're kind of having to be quiet because the director said no jingle bells so I was so I said you have to be really quiet and you have to like, lay the presents down so no one can hear you and she goes well everybody knows that elves have jingle bells so we're doing the show and then I have to go back for strike and I feel this tug on my shorts and it's her and she tells me you know, everyone I asked said elves have jingle bells. <laughs> she had to take a poll and like <laughs> and tell me like, okay, you are wrong and I am right and elves have jingle bells and I'm going to let you know. It's like, okay, little girl, I see ya. <laughs> <laughs> but they're funny. Oh, you can tell, you can tell when they don't like their costume. You can tell, right. They'll put it on and they'll make it like, you know, and I just try not to say, okay, you know, just, what, you, know so, you know, it's, it's just, this one little girl, she was supposed to be a mouse. It was a mouse costume. You know, it's a tail and ears and right. she goes, well, it's a mouse. I'm like, <laughs> well, yeah, because you're a mouse. That, yeah, it's, 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 it's okay. You know, <laughs> I want them to be really excited to wear it, but sometimes they have a different vision in their head <laughs> than I do, obviously. <laughs> has, has that changed a lot in the, in these new, it seems like, from from starting on those Barney days in 96 
Has it changed or are kids still the same? Kids are the kids. I, I think they, they've, they have more access to stuff. They have okay. more information, you know, than the kids that we started with on Barney. And so Barney, they, you have a call on um, Park One. You have a call on Park One. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm at work. Um, yeah, but all good. they they have more access to stuff. So when I, I teach class, right, I teach a costume design class, and I just taught a couple this past July, and they're on their phones looking at stuff, you know, trying to find research and trying to find, you know, kids, you know, 10 years ago wouldn't even had that opportunity to do that. So they're a little more savvy. And, you know, I had to do a couple of Zoom um, classes, and they were telling me, Mr. Lyle, you just like hit that triple button up there and, you know, and click on that and that'll open it up. And well, it was like, <laughs> So I was like, oh, I'm glad that somebody knows what they're doing because I'm, you know, not very technically savvy. So, but they're forgiving. Well, <laughs> <laughs> do they, is there a little bit though of a, of a uh, I don't want to say, a know-it-all a little bit? Do they, because we see this in other areas, right? Because right. Of, of YouTube and social media and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I can do that, and, right? You see singers that start, you know, scatting and it's like, yeah, but you haven't learned actually your tone yet and you're this or that i mean do you see that too where they're like oh I, that's easy i can yeah I you can know so that. we're teaching class and the the, the the goal is to make a costume at the right. end of the week like make up our part you know try to you know try to rein them in so then the girl comes in she goes i want to make a jacket and a blouse and a skirt i said well you're not going to be able to make all that because we have to start i have to teach you how to sew and then to teach you all this it's a progress they don't want to do that they want to start sewing immediately like you know they're gonna say i thought we were gonna be making i want to make a ball gown i said well you need to learn how to sew before you can make a ball gown like, like it doesn't you don't learn how to do it by making it yet you have to learn how because i have projects lined up that they do so, so they can learn how to operate the sewing machine and they can learn how to hand sew and then we go to the to the final project but yeah they some of them are very impatient about thinking they should just come in and start start sewing immediately and start doing it and creating and they need to learn the basics first. Right. I think that's, that's a YouTube generation where they, like you said, they go on YouTube and they can see somebody do it. You know, you hear that all the time. Oh, I went on YouTube and I do it myself. I went on YouTube and saw somebody do it. So I think that kind of, that information, having that information access is, is different. I can just see you now. <laughs> it just, you know, uh, no, no. <laughs> oh yeah, I did say, oh, girl, you can't sew on a button. How are you gonna make a ball gown? <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, you need to the rain in a little bit. It's like make something that you can finish. You know, that's the whole idea too. Don't be so ambitious. I don't want to, you know, squish anybody's dream, but make something that you know you can actually finish and show that you've completed something, and then move on to something else. So. Right. What has it been like with you being at the children's theater? And because I presume this is an introduction. It's like a lot of kids, this is the first time to see theater, right? Yeah. So then getting there. So what you're doing, you're introducing the kids to theater and obviously the wardrobe and all of that. Yeah. What's this experience been like for you? You know, because whenever I first started here, I missed because when I was at Barney, I would help the kids make crafts. Like they would make a craft and I would teach them how to do it. And we would have Fridays where I would meet with them and we would work that out. So I missed that kind of being with them and teaching them. So that's when it started. I said, I really want to teach classes here. And um, so that kind of propelled me to keep doing it, you know, wanting to help kids. Cause I, and I also think that even adults, they don't realize when they come see a live show, what all went into it. Like someone actually, picked up the fabric and actually decided how that costume was going to look and actually made it. They didn't go to Party City and buy it. And there are kids who that don't want to be performers, but they want to be involved. You know, they want to be included. So I think theater is kind of all inclusive that way where, you know, they don't, they, they, they need to know they work backstage and hand somebody a prop or they can pull the curtain. They don't have to be the performer, but they can be involved in, in the process. I think that's important for oh, kids. I, I, I agree with you completely. <laughs> So what are your recommendations for kids that want to get into this? Where, where do they start? Where do they go? You know, I mean, community theater is always a good place to start. They, you know, now most community theaters do uh, like Aladdin Jr. And, you know, whatever. So they have the, ki the, the all the parts are played by kids. I mean, we have classes here, you know, that they can take. We have 
you know, tons of acting classes and a really great musical theater program. And, but, you know, in the summers we do technical theater where they take a class and they learn how to stage manage and they learn how to work in the costume shop and they learn how to, you know, do props. And then they actually apply that to a show. So it's, you know, wanting to do it and having the access to it. But there are tons of community theaters that do really great work and do really great classes too. So. Do you, what do you look for? Do you recommend get as many skills as you can learning how to sew this, you know, th these different things. Yeah. If you want to get into doing wardrobe or is it, is it important to start on that and then go to design later? What are well, your recommendations think, there? You know, I think that um, they're hand in hands. Like whenever I teach a class and, and um, we're looking at stuff and there's a, a person or a child or a kid that has drawn a really great costume. They're a really great artist, but I always remind them. So I'm not really looking to see how well you can draw. I'm looking to see what idea that you have. So it's always, and the kids get intimate. They're like, oh, I don't want to show my drawing. I said, it's not about if you can draw it well. It's about how well you can express it and what your idea is. So I always push that. It's like, I'm looking for the best idea, not the best artist and not the best, you know, person who can, um, you know, come up with, you know, how to draw the fabric the best. I said, I just need somebody that can have the best idea. And I, I always suggest that they learn to sew because that way they know how a garment goes together when they design it. You know, because there, there are designers that I've met that have, have worked with me that they can't sew a stitch. Right. They can draw a pretty picture, you know, right. and it's, it's difficult to work with them because they don't know <laughs> how things go together and they don't know, you know, and plus here, you've got to be able to sew. I can't, you know, it's me basically by myself in a shop, sometimes with some extra help, but not much. So I rely on that designer to know how to sew something. Right. <laughs> right. Can you sew on a label or anything? <laughs> it's like, so. Well, and don't you think that's kind of a problem that kids these days are, they're almost as scared to try because they feel like they need to be perfect. Yeah. And that the point is, it's okay. You it, you got to get there. So mistakes and all that is, is just not a big deal. Yeah, I, I remind them all the time. I say, I make a mistake all the time. I mean, I still put a sleeve in backwards. I still was making a pair of pants the other day. I was like, how could these go together? I was like, I don't I put them together wrong, like twice. Like, you know, I just, you've, you know, of course I haven't sewn in a while. So, right. but you, you make mistakes and that's part of it. And you can always fix it, you know, but there are kids that they get, they get discouraged when they're sewing something, it's not perfect, you know? And I was like, well, you can either take it out and redo it, or you can just try better next time, you know? So. Uh, all right. You got to end with some good Barney story. <laughs> I, 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 we got to end with a good laugh. You know, this I, this is the one I thought about because I was like, what can I tell that's really not too off color? But, uh, you know, <laughs> when we, we first started, and I think we were at um, Universal Studios uh, early on in the tour. And this is just, in, I in didn't LA? really know. Yeah, I didn't really know anybody really yet. And I certainly didn't really know the crew that well. And I didn't know Sloan that well or Jake that well. And I get, we're, we're loading in in my hair. Will Lyle come to the stage? I'm like, what? So, so I go and it's all the crew, it's Sloan Coleman and Jake Barron. Sloan's holding this pennant. It's a pennant that's rainbow yeah. striped. And she said, can you tell me what this means? And I'm looking at it going, um, and uh, Seth Goldstein, tell her. I said, well, it's a gay pride symbol. She goes, what? <laughs> I said, yeah, it's a gay pride symbol. She said, what part of it? I said, well, all of it. It's triangle shaped and it has rainbow stripes. She's like, oh my God. <laughs> and I was just like, but at first I was so terrified to, to say things. I, 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 do I tell her or do I say, oh, well, it's, it's a rainbow flag. It's like, <laughs> but it's, it was, it was all of those things. It was a triangle and a rainbow flag and it was a gay pride symbol. <laughs> it was, a, you know, the thing that went on the back of Barney's car. Yeah. <laughs> I, but I think that's so great too, because I think that's how we all come together, right? We learn and we, you know, I, I feel like the tour was the greatest education ever. It was. You know, and all these different types of people and boy, we just <laughs> yeah. came I mean, together. Where, where else would myself and Creech Anderson become best buds? I mean, what universe does that 
<laughs> exist in, you know, and it's because we, we make each other laugh, you know, that's was, was part of it, but any other situation, you know, and I, I didn't think that a lot of those, those guys, they, they were, weren't around somebody like me a lot or ever, you know, I think maybe Harold, cause he did, he was a theater person, but right. you know, those other guys, they, they had no idea, you know, about right. stuff. and so, but they, they were all, they were all awesome. <laughs> yeah i don't but I, I think that's what made it so much fun and why we're we're all so close yeah you know i didn't know everything that was gonna you know you put a berry pearl together <laughs> yeah the dynamic the, the the berry pearl and the kids and the right. rock and roll stagehands and you know those people from dallas that are all just kind of and you just throw them together and see what has like a huge experiment it's like right the real world you know really <laughs> Right, but I, I think that's why it, 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 you know, it really showed on stage how much really hard there was because everyone was there. And like I said, I never had to worry. I, I'm tr I was trying to think where it was today, like West Virginia or something. I, I don't know. I jumped out of the suit and you were having to remember you spray me down in the, with the rubbing alcohol. Remember that? Yeah. I was like, Lyle. <laughs> you were like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what I'm doing here, but. You know, it was like my bath and I wiped down and went out on the street or something. But it just, I don't know, like we all just kind of were there and we're experiencing life while you're on the road. Yeah. And there's no one, you know, once again, all the people that you had in your life, your friends and your family are really gone. It's, it's this new family yeah. that, you know, I just met you three months ago and now, you know. I'm opening up my soul and I'm asking for help and you've seen me fall and, you know, and all the things that, that we went through, through it. So, I mean, I could sit here and talk to you forever. Bob. <laughs> it's been awesome. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm so happy with what's going on. I see you as well on Facebook and all of that stuff and see the success you're having. And I'm just thrilled about it. I'm thrilled that you haven't changed one dang bit. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Josh and I were talking and said, you know, and he helped, he helped put this together. And I said, I'm going to need to stretch, get ready for Lyle, because I don't know where he's going to go. <laughs> but, man, thank you so much for being on. Oh, you're welcome. I, it's my pleasure, actually. I was like, <laughs> when is he going to call me? <laughs> I was going to like, hey, uh, Carrie. <laughs> just, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Of course, I have to have you on this show, you know, to, to tell this, this crazy, wonderful story. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lyle. You're welcome. You're so welcome. Well, thank you so much for watching Purple Roads. Remember to keep your eyes, ears, and your heart open, and you'll find your Purple Road. We'll see you next week. <laughs>